Joey Logano says NASCAR fans are spoiled, and Noah Gragson was spotted in the Stuart Haas shop. Who says the offseason doesn't give you things to talk about? First off, on Wednesday morning, we have Joey Logano on his SiriusXM NASCAR show saying that fans are spoiled because they don't appreciate the unprecedented access that they have to drivers. And I'll be completely honest, Joey sounds like the ultimate dad who just wants to complain about anything and everything. First, he complained about the Netflix cameras being around because he didn't want them coming into his personal life too much. Okay, fine, just don't have them there. There's a simple solution to that. Funny for a guy that also just did the USA docuseries last season in 2022, which showed a bit of his personal life. So that was confusing. And then this week, he comes on and says that NASCAR fans just aren't appreciative of the access that they have to drivers. And I'll be honest, they don't really have that great of access. Joey's out here acting like Veruca Salt, and he's super spoiled, and he thinks that NASCAR fans are spoiled because they have access, and he really needs to be acting like Charlie because he needs to be giving back as much as he can. At a time where the fan base is dwindling and NASCAR is desperately trying to grow in popularity, you can't have one of your champions out here saying that the fans are spoiled when they absolutely are not. NASCAR and their drivers always, routinely, throughout every season, mention how much access fans have to drivers. And it's just vehemently not true. Sure, some fans have access to drivers. The same fans that can, one, afford either a hot pass, sponsor a car, or know somebody within the industry. Getting a hot pass is kind of like getting a job in the industry. You have to know somebody more often than not. The only other way to get one is to buy like a VIP package through the track or through NASCAR or something like that something that maybe your typical fan can't afford. There are some tracks that do a great job of giving fans access. Indianapolis Motor Speedway is a great example of that. You can get right up next to the drivers by just buying a GA ticket even. So there is things like that. Other tracks make it super restrictive. Most of them have an add-on, Daytona, other places like that. You have to purchase an additional you know, add-on to your ticket to be able to go down to the infield, to stand in the garage. And while the garages at Daytona are super nice and somewhat accessible to drivers, you can stand on the other side of the plexiglass like you're at a zoo and hand things through and hope you don't get bit by, by Tony Stewart back in the day, you don't really get these you know, overwhelming interactions with drivers. And now, some drivers, don't get me wrong, absolutely go above and beyond when it comes to fan interaction. You'll see Ross Chastain out in the midway or Eric Jones, somebody stopping by to sign autographs and just take pictures of the fans and you know talk back and forth for a little bit. Drivers routinely you know, will sign autographs, talk to fans, everything like that. But more often than not, drivers kind of hide out in their coaches and then hop on a golf cart and zoom past everybody to get to the grid or get to their hauler. There's not this overwhelming interaction that you know drivers and NASCAR seem to think that there is. And in terms of accessibility, NASCAR is really not that accessible and it's not that great. IMSA, on the other hand, is wildly accessible. You can walk anywhere. Daytona just ran a promo this past week where you could get a general admission ticket for the Rolex 24 at Daytona, which general admission, you can sit anywhere you want in that front stretch grandstand. You can go to walk around the infield as well, as well as a pit pass and a hat, all for the low price of $70. That's, an, that's the add-on for on top of your regular ticket price for a NASCAR race just to be able to get to the infield. This gives you access to go right down on the in the garage on the grid with the drivers. It's really fun. If you haven't done it, I highly recommend going. Uh, it's one of those experiences that you absolutely will not regret. NHRA, they also, you buy any ticket, you get to go down and walk around the garage area. You can be right up next to the drivers, the crews, the cars. You can let your eyes burn uh, when they fire the cars up. You can do all of that. IndyCar is more accessible than NASCAR is at this point. It used to be that IndyCar, all their drivers thought they were too elite and the NASCAR drivers were just a bunch of good old Southern boys and they were approachable and they're happy to see the fans. It's kind of the opposite now. IndyCar does a great job interacting with the fans. Their drivers will walk out on the mounds at Indianapolis during a test day, just take pictures with fans, sign autographs. That's not happening in NASCAR anymore. So to say that the fans are spoiled because their drivers are so accessible is just wrong. And I don't think Joey understands what like all goes into into their appearances. He mentions the red carpet, which NASCAR does after they come out of the driver's meeting. Again, the only way you're getting down there is if you have a hot pass, cold passes technically can get down there as well, and VIPs, like if you buy that add-on ticket package, that's not for your regular fan to go down there. So yeah, are they accessible? Sure, with a price to it, an additional price. Of course, they're going to be more accessible than your baseball players, your MLB play, or your NFL players, and things like that. But that's a completely different type of setup here. Like you don't see fans walking down 
on the field pre you know pregame or anything like that. And even at that, if you go to a baseball game and you show up half an hour early or whenever guys are kind of hanging out in the dugout, they'll walk over to the fence and sign autographs for you. So it's not really an accessibility thing at that. So Joey just feels short-sighted and probably regrets what he said because he's going to get a lot of backlash for it. And I wish, I'm sure NASCAR probably wishes that he didn't say it, uh, being a pretty decent representative for the sport. So if you're a NASCAR fan, you're spoiled, unfortunately, in the eyes of Joey Logano. Something else we also saw on Wednesday was Noah Gragson showing up at the Stuart Haas Racing Shop. Somebody did a little paparazzi sneak picture and, you know, grabbed Noah a photo of him, which was hanging out in the SHR shop around what appeared to be the number 10 cars bay. That's because Noah Gragson will be driving that number 10 car in 2024. They just haven't formally announced it yet. So seeing him hang out there is not a shock. But they are like kind of the worst sneaky links possible. And if you're old and you don't understand what a sneaky link is, it's like a friend with benefits type of situation. Nobody wants to talk about it. We all know about it, though. And in this situation, they're really bad at trying to keep this a secret because we all know what's going on here. So, of course, Noah had a tumultuous first full-time NASCAR Cup Series season with Legacy Motor Club last year. Uh, the two parted ways a little over halfway through the season, and they allowed Noah to get his release, and that's how they framed it in the press release, is that Noah Gragson was granted his release from Legacy Motor Club in an effort to try to save some face. Obviously, Noah was suspended at the time for liking a racially insensitive meme on Instagram, something that he absolutely should not have done. I know there's going to be comments about it, whatever, uh, when you represent a company in multi-million, billion-dollar sponsors, you can't do stuff like that. just is what it is. You'd get fired from your job, too, if you know it came down to it. Beside the point. So Noah moves on, goes, hides out for a little bit, does some sensitivity training and, you know, does some learning. He's raced in the Penty series, done some super late model stuff. He was just down at the Snowball Derby this past weekend. And he talked to Matt Weaver from Sports Not One. He was down there and basically talked about how he's done a lot of learning over the last few months. He's educated himself. He didn't understand why it was insensitive and everything that was behind it. He's saying and doing all the right things. He's taking the right classes. He's doing the right training. Noah's done everything that you could possibly ask for. And NASCAR has, of course, reinstated him as well. So there's no issue of that. They just haven't formally announced it at Stuart Haas Racing yet. And he does bring a bit of sponsorship with him. And not enough for a full 36 races from what I've heard, but enough that Stuart Haas can build off of that and try to piece together sponsorship for the rest of the season for Noah as well. And from a personality standpoint, I think Stuart Haas Racing is definitely a much better landing spot for him than Legacy Motor Club was. Once Jimmy Johnson bought into Legacy Motor Club, Petty GMS, and then rebranded it and everything, Noah's personality didn't fit the image that Jimmy's trying to curate with that team. Stuart Haas Racing, on the other hand, with Tony Stewart at the helm, even Gene Haas, I mean, did prison time after all. He's a bit of a bad boy. Uh, Noah's image fits with them, not from like, we like racially insensitive things, but rather, um, you know, he's a bit, he's outspoken, he's bombastic, he dresses funny, he does weird things, he just likes to have fun and, you know... There's some Tony Stewart in that. So I think his personality is going to fit much better at Stewart Haas Racing. Whether that team stays with Ford into the future, that remains to be seen still as well. But Ford blocked Kyle Larson from being signed at Stewart Haas after what he said on the iRacing live stream back in 2020. So it is a bit surprising that Ford didn't block Noah Gragson because if you're going to take a chance, like Kyle Larson is a much bigger talent than Noah Gragson. No offense to Noah, I think everybody understands that. Uh, so that kind of makes me think that they're not going to be back with Ford or Tony was just basically like, I'm going to do what I want here in this situation because after all, Ford did have him pass on both Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch in well, two out of three years, which is just astronomically stupid at the end of the day. So Gregson hanging out the Stuart Haas racing shop. Nobody's making a secret about it anymore. He's just wide out there in the open saying, come get me like he's Jordan Belfort standing at the podium of Stratford, whatever the heck the name of his investment firm was, I completely blanked out there. And then he's just saying, "This is I'm here, we're doing this, and Stuart Haas Racing doesn't really seem to be hiding it either. So those are the two big things that happened on Wednesday. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, uh, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.